doesn't love a good whodunit? I do, especially when it involves poison. I mean, uh, gems and jewelry. That's, that's what I meant. Anyway, what better source for all that than the best-selling crime novelist of all time, Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie, formerly Agatha Miller, was born in Torquay, Southwest England in 1890. Christie taught herself to read by the age of five, learned to speak French, and became an accomplished pianist by the age of 18. Unfortunately, her shyness toward crowds kept her from pursuing it further. Luckily for us, she started writing. Fun fact. Agatha Christie had dysgraphia, so she was unable to comprehend legible written work. As a result, she dictated all of her material to the world's luckiest typist, and maybe the busiest. Christie's fiction has sold more than a billion copies to date, second only to William Shakespeare. Speaking of whom, he had a thing for gems as well. Click here to watch our video all about the gemstones in Shakespeare. Luckily for us, she was a big fan of jewelry and wrote about it in a few of her most popular novels and short stories. One stands out above the rest, though, so let's dive into the affair of the Pink Pearl. Agatha's popular crime-fighting couple Tommy and Tuppence have 24 hours to locate a valuable pink pearl that has gone missing after an evening of bridge. In this whirlwind drama, the pearl is described as a pendant consisting of two small diamond wings and a big pink pearl depending from them. A pearl of enormous value had been wrenched off. Stolen. What? Where is the Scooby gang when you need them? Let's try to solve this mystery ourselves. What type of pearl might this missing gem be? Pearls come in a variety of colors. Pink, specifically, can occur in cultured freshwater pearls, as mother of pearl, and more rarely, conch pearls. Conch pearl is a marine gastropod, or more simply, a large sea snail. The conch shell was considered by the Incas and many early cultures to be the mouthpiece of the gods. Legend says that when held to the ear, you could hear the voice of the sea god as he murmured through it. Well, I can't tell what he's saying, but it sure sounds like the sea to me. The earliest mention of conch pearls specifically can be found in the 1839 catalog of the collection of pearls and precious stones written by Henry Philip Hope, a famous collector of the arts and precious gems. Conch pearls are made of layers of fibrous calcium, often giving them a much desired flame-like structure on the surface. Unlike nearly all pearls today, these conch pearls are not cultured. Instead, they're found by fishermen when they're cleaning the shells for their meat. Way to keep it traditional. Most sources say that one in every 10 to 20,000 conchs has a pearl. Other sources say that about one in 2,000 shells hold a pearl. One in 10,000 contain a pearl that can be used in jewelry. And one in 100,000 holds an actual gem quality piece. Wow. Add in the fact that conchs live in pretty shallow water and are very slow to grow, making them susceptible to overfishing, and you've got one rare gemstone. Imagine how nervous you'd be if it fell off the table and rolled under the credenza during a silly game of cards. Or worse, what if it was stolen? Let's leave the world of fiction behind and talk about Agatha Christie herself. A lover of fine jewels, she owned many brooches, necklaces, earrings, and pendants. In her memoirs, she talked about her favorite pieces from her mother's collection, saying, the real jewels consisted of my mother's diamond buckle, my diamond crescent, and my diamond engagement ring. The rest of the decorations too were real, but relatively inexpensive. She goes on to mention her Indian necklace, a Florentine set, a cameo, and so on. Fast forward 30 years after her death, and we found there was one more Agatha Christie mystery to unravel. Enter Jennifer Grant. An avid Christie fan, Grant took part in a 2006 auction held at Greenway House, Christie's former home. There, she bought a 100-pound trunk for, well, a hundred pounds. Inside was a locked strong box that she left locked for several more years. Eventually, curiosity got the best of her and she pried open the locked box for the big reveal. Inside were over 50 gold coins, a small crochet bag with more gold sovereigns and a very small, unassuming, 
cardboard box. If there are any Poirots watching, you may have already figured out where this is going. For the rest of you, I'll just tell you. Inside the box were the diamond buckle-shaped brooch and Christie's mother's three stone brilliant cut diamond engagement ring. The two pieces alone were valued at over $25,000. Mystery solved. In the same year, Grant sold these items at auction for just under 64,000 US dollars. Another fun fact. Agatha Christie's estate today is worth about $600 million. Who needs a ratty old trunk? That could buy me a ton of jewelry. What jewelry or gemstone would you write your mystery novel about? Let me know in the comments. And oh, just one more thing. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.